Hi everyone and welcome to Life Groups. Uh, it's a Tuesday again. They seem to come around very quickly these weeks. Um, I hope you've had a great week. We're praying for you. Uh, we're standing with you. We believe in for God to do just great things during this time. Um, I would just want to say thank you to everyone who uh, who just put kind words on our WhatsApp page to do with the devotionals and the, mm. the series we've just done and just thank you for your appreciation. I hope they blessed you and we'll we'll do some more devotionals as well very soon. Um, but I hope they were just an encouragement to you and that, you know, you're growing in grace and God is just blessing you and encouraging you through his word. And so tonight, as we come to Psalm 22, yeah, this is the 22nd week uh, of this series and next week is going to end on Psalm 23. Um, and we'll bring it to a close for, but with, with that one. And Claire's going to be speaking next week, which is great. We're looking forward to what Claire has to say on Psalm 23, The Lord is my shepherd. But today we're going to look at Psalm 22. And I just want to say to you today, um, or tonight, have you ever asked these questions? Where is God when I need him? What What do I do? If I feel abandoned by God, will God come through for me? I want you to stop for a moment and, uh, and be honest and answer whether you've actually asked those questions. I'm sure you have. And what I want to do tonight with Psalm 22 <clears throat> is kind of help you with these questions. I don't have all the answers. Um... I'm not a theologian, uh, I don't have a colossal intellect, um, so I can't, uh, I can't answer everything to your satisfactory, I'm sure. But we can try and work some of these things out and figure some of these things out together and uh, hopefully get to a better place. Um, and so Psalm 22 helps with all of these questions. Where is God when I need him? What do I do if I feel abandoned by God? Will God come through? Will he answer my prayer? Does he care about me? Will he help me? Psalm 22 is a psalm of David. And in the very first two verses, we read David's cry, David's pain, David's agony and suffering. When he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from me? From the words of my, my groaning, my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer, and by night, but I find no rest. That's the introduction to this psalm. So straight away you see David's pain and suffering. Do those words perhaps resonate with you? Maybe you've used similar words. Maybe you've used exactly those words. Maybe you've, you've had this psalm and you've said to God, I feel like that. Maybe you've cried out to God and you've said, God, I don't know where you are right now. But I just want to say to you, that's okay. That's really okay. You're not a bad Christian. You haven't lost your faith. You're not backslidden. You're just normal and human. And so, you know, God loves honesty. And in Psalm 62, we are encouraged um, by God to pour out our heart to him. The psalmist in Psalm 62 pours out his heart to God. That can be painful. It can be, it can come with deep emotions and anger and, you know, doubt and fear. But that's okay. Because one thing I've learned in the Christian faith is this, that God is big enough to cope with our emotions and how we feel and our questions and our difficulties. My doubts don't kill God. My faith doesn't create him. God is and always will be. And so we can come to God and be honest. He sees it anyway. He sees the pain. He sees our hearts. He sees our thoughts. He sees all of that. And so why hide it from him? Why not just be honest with him and allow God to help us work through that? So David cries out, my God, my God, you have... Why have you forsaken me? And maybe some of you were surprised that David prayed that in Psalm 22, that he actually felt that way. You know, this was King David who had defeated Goliath. 
This is King David anointed by Samuel to replace Saul. This was the one that God said, he's a man after my own heart. You know, he's, he, was, he was probably the greatest king that ever lived. He was the most famous king that ever lived. And he'd, he'd done incredible, incredible things. But I think in this psalm you see his humanity. You realise that he may have been a king, he may have been a man of God, he may have been used greatly by God, but he was still human. He was flesh and blood. And he feels how we feel. He, he, he has the same struggles as we have. And so we can relate to David. David is a good example to us of different seasons in life and how difficult and overwhelming they can be. And so be encouraged by the fact that you're not alone. You're not alone. And to encourage you even more, there is another amazing fact that we see from this psalm, that these words are not only the words of David, but they're also the words of Christ. Because this is what we call a messianic psalm. In other words, it's a psalm that not only speaks of David's words and David's feelings and experience at that time of what he's going through, but it speaks prophetically into the future of the Saviour, Jesus Christ, who was going to come and what was going to happen in his life and the things he would say. And so Psalm 22 is a direct quote of what Jesus would say over a thousand years later as he hung on the cross at Calvary. In Matthew 27, 46, you can read it for yourself. It says, about, about three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? They were the words of Christ as he hung on the cross, the same words that David used. And we shouldn't be surprised by that because Jesus was the son of David, not literally, but spiritually, that they knew that this Messiah would come, would be from David's lineage. He, he would be a part of David's uh, line and sit on David's throne. And so often in the Gospels, you hear people refer to Jesus as the son of David. Um, and so David cried out there and the son of David, Jesus Christ, a thousand years later, cried out the same thing. Does that make you feel a little bit more encouraged today? That even the Son of God felt like he had been forsaken and felt separated from God. And he had. This was the first time in history, the first time in the relationship as father and son, that this was the first time the Trinity had been broken, where the Son was separated from the Father because he took upon him the sins of the world. And a holy God cannot look upon sin. And so God had to turn his back on him and I love the saying God turned his back on his son so he wouldn't have to turn his back on us and so for that time and that period on the cross God had to turn away from his son and was separated in their relationship because he carried the sins of the world it was only temporary and that relationship was restored and through that God not only had one son but has many sons many children many people he can call his own because of what Jesus endured. But I want to encourage you. You're in great company this morning. If you feel like this. If you feel that uh, God has forsaken you. If you feel like he, he, he he's not as close as he used to be. That you don't know where he is during these times. That's okay. David felt the same. And Jesus felt the same. And you know what? Every Christian who has ever lived has felt the same. The enemy will tell you you're the only one. That you're a bad Christian that nobody else feels like this and that if you had more faith this wouldn't happen and you wouldn't feel this way but the truth is it does even John Calvin uh, was a great man of God great preacher he in his commentary said this he said I have concluded that a sense of being forsaken by God far from being unique to Christ or rare for the believer is a regular and frequent struggle for believers he wrote, there is not one of the godly who does not daily experience in himself the same thing. According to the judgment of the flesh, he thinks he is cast off and forsaken by God, while yet he apprehends by faith the grace of God, which is hidden from the eye of sense and reason. We must not think that living the Christian life is easy, or that we will not daily have to bear the cross. And so even John Calvin acknowledges the fact that there are times in our lives where we will feel or we will ask the question, where is God? Where is God in all of this? Where is God when I need him? So the second question, what do we do when we feel that way? What do we do when we feel like God has abandoned us? Well, let me say this, don't panic and don't buy into the lie 
that 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 he, he has abandoned you or that you're the only one who feels like this don't mistake god's silence for god's absence we have to understand that that god may not be responding to your prayers right now he may not be answering the prayers as quick as you would like you may not have a strong sense of his presence but god's silence is not the same as God's absence. We mustn't mistake that. Sometimes we think God isn't answering me, therefore he's not with me. That's not true. And so I want you to remember three things. God is holy. That's what the psalmist says in verse 3. Yet you are holy and throned on the praises of Israel. That's important because if he's holy, then he, he cannot lie. And that's important because the Bible tells us that he has promised to never leave us nor forsake us, that he will be, be with us till the end of the age that nothing will separate us from the love of God, but he will be with us, he will take care of us, he will walk with us, he will help us and even carry us. And so if he's holy and he cannot lie and he cannot sin, therefore he has to uh, fulfil his promises, he has to hold true to his word. And so we can be assured by that and confident in that. So remember, God is a holy God. He's not sadistic. He doesn't enjoy pain or suffering. When, God, when we hurt, God hurts. And so we may feel abandoned, but we have to hold on to the truth of God's word, not how we feel. The second thing we need to do is remember that God has a great track record of delivering and rescuing people. He has a great track record. In verses 4 and 5, the psalmist reminds himself, he says, In you, our fathers trusted, they trusted and you delivered them. To, the, to you they cried and were rescued. In you they trusted and were not put to shame. Or another version says, were not disappointed. I want to encourage you to remember that. That God is a deliverer. That when we read the Bible from, from the Old Testament to the New, God has always come through. God has always rescued and delivered. He has a great track record. He's never disappointed anyone. He's never let them down. You may have feel disappointed with God, but maybe that's because... You had false expectations or maybe you just wanted something that wasn't good for you and God said no to it. Who knows? But I know this, that God is not a disappointment. He doesn't let people down. He has never left us to shame. He has never embarrassed us. When we proclaim that God is faithful, he has never shown himself to be anything else but faithful. And so to encourage you and to build up your faith, maybe go back, read some of the stories of of Moses and the Red Sea, Joshua crossing the Jordan and going into Jericho. Read about what God did through Elijah and Elisha and Abraham and all of these things and you will see that God is a deliverer. He is someone who rescues us and someone who we can trust. And that's what David is reminding himself of. His feelings were saying God has abandoned me, but his faith was saying, you know what? Your father's trusted in them and they, he was rescued. So let's believe that. And so I want to encourage you to overcome your disappointment and to overcome your sense of feeling abandoned by realising that God has never let anyone down and he's not going to start now. He's not going to start with you. Set the third thing is, God has had his hand upon your life personally, and you know that. David knew that. He said, you, you who took me from the womb, you made me trust in you at my mother's breast. On you was I cast from my birth, and from my mother's womb you have been my God. He's talking about his personal relationship with God. Now he's reminding himself of what God has already done for him and the way God has already taken care of him and that he's always been there. And so remember that God's hand is upon your life. It always has been and it always will be. And so how you feel right now is not the reality of how it is. And so we have to come back for that, to that. And lastly, we have to answer the question, will God come through for me? In times of suffering and difficulty, it's easy for your faith to be shaken, for hope to be lost. But as someone once said, in times of difficulty, we haven't lost hope. We just lost perspective. And that's so true. That's so true. That's the first thing that we lose is our perspective. But we can mistake that for hope. You are not without hope. Will God answer your prayers? Will God help you? Look, God doesn't always give us what we want. He'll only give us what we need that's good for us and according to his will and purpose. So I'm not going to say God will answer every one of your prayers because I don't know what your prayers are and whether they're in line with the will of God. But I do know this, that if it's God's will for you and God, God wants it for you and it is good for you, uh, he will give you what you need. Not what you want, but what you need. And God will help you and will always take care of you. 
So the answer is yes. It may not be quick, it may not be easy, but God will help you. He will, he will respond to your prayers. Psalm 22 and verse 22, David says this, after he's feeling forsaken by God, he reminds himself of the faithfulness of God and all that God has done for his forefathers and his ancestors. And then he comes to the point where he says this in verse 22 to 24, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you offspring of Jacob, glorify him and stand in awe of him. Why? Why is he saying this? Why is he telling the congregation, the people who are meeting together at the temple? Why is he declaring this to his fellow believers? Why is he declaring this to Israel? Verse 24, because he has not despised or abhorred or abandoned the afflicted, the affliction of the afflicted, and he has not hidden his face from him, but he has heard when he cried to him. So David is come to that point where he says, you know what? God heard my prayer and God will answer my prayer. He hasn't hidden himself from me. I felt abandoned, but he was right there beside me. And so Israel praised God. Israel thanked God. Israel worshipped God because he has not despised us. He has not uh, abandoned us when we're afflicted and suffering, but he is right there with us. I may not have been able to see his face, but his face was shining upon me. David came to that place by faith, by believing, by trusting in God. And I want you to come to that place. Push through those feelings of abandonment. Push through those questions of why. Why has this happened? Why is this going on? What is, where is God in all of this? Push through by faith and believe the truth of God's word, not how you feel. And come to that place where you trust God and you put your hope and faith in him and in what he says come to that place where you keep believing you keep praying notice what david said he said i pray day and night right in verse two right in verse two he says i pray day and night and so i want you to keep on praying day and night even though your prayers don't seem to be answered yet even though you don't feel that like god is with you keep pressing in keep pushing through because that's what faith does that's what trust does that's what hope does and so live by that faith and not just by how you feel i know it's hard because feelings are so real to us but hold on to the promises and the truth of god's word let me finish tonight by giving you a, a short testimony or a story that i heard a few weeks ago because every one of us has been in a place where we've prayed and asked god to help us and we feel like it's not going to happen I've been there in my personal life. I know there are times of suffering and hurt and pain in my life where I've said, where are you in all of this, God? Why why has this happened? I don't understand. But I've had to come to the point where my faith isn't based on what I understand or what I, what, what I can comprehend or work out in my own thinking. It has to be based on the fact that God is good and God does good and he'll work things all together for good. And I have to come settle that fact in my heart and establish my heart in that. You know, I was talking to someone a few weeks ago or a little while ago and they were praying for a miracle. They were in the middle of a building project um, on their church and they completed some of it but not all of it. And they were they were going to dedicate the building, have a special meeting on the Sunday, uh, dedicating the building of what they've done so far. And they had a guest speaker and a big service plan to celebrate all that God was doing. But they had a massive problem as well. They were £350,000 short to pay the bills. And they needed it before that Sunday. Otherwise they were going to be in major problems. And they didn't have it. And they, so th this person was telling me that they were on their knees praying, begging, crying out to God. She said, I, she said to me, I've never prayed so much. She said, I've never begged God so much. She was quoting scripture to God. You know, you never let your people, uh, you've never let your people, be seen your people begging for bread. You've never allowed your people to be in need. And she was quoting scripture and praying and begging God. And you know what, on the Wednesday before that Sunday, where they were going to have their dedica dedication service for the building, someone anonymously donated £350,000 to the church. To me, that is incredible. That's, that's what God does. That's the miracle that God can do. Will he come through for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm not saying he's going to give you 350000 <laughs> you know, we can believe, we can pray, we can ask, but God will definitely give us what we need. 
and will come through. But the person who was telling me the story said this, you can have your miracle, but it won't come easy. And so we have to realise, we have to push through all this stuff and keep believing and keep trusting God. It's okay to feel like God has abandoned you. It's okay to ask the question, where is God in all of this? That's okay. We're in great company because everybody has felt that way. But don't stay in that place. Don't stay in that place. Make it a place you visit, but not a place you stay. And come through that experience, knowing and believing and trusting God for better things. Don't let life make you bitter. Allow life to make you better. God will come through and answer your prayer. It may not be today, it may not be tomorrow, but know that he will, because he is good and he is faithful. God bless you. Thank you for listening. Have a great week, guys. See you soon.